the entire libertarian worldview is self-contained and coherent. So I insist to you that we are not fiscally conservative and socially liberal. We are not a ramshackle hodgepodge of ideas. We are not wannabes. They should want to be us. We shouldn't want to be them. We hold the most principled and consistent set of political ideas, I dare say, of any party anywhere in the world, and we should be proud of them and not run away from it or sugarcoat it or try to make it acceptable to people. And I say that not as somebody who doesn't want to reach out to people. All I do is reach out to people. I wrote a, I, I wrote a book on, I don't have it with me, but I wrote a book on an anti-war book with a guy from the left. Because I thought, well, he's against mass murder and so am I. So that's a pretty good start for a collaboration and a friendship. And we, we did this anti-war book together. I'm perfectly happy to talk to anybody who will listen. I have converted many, many, many neoconservatives over to libertarianism. Partly because I used to be one. I was a neoconservative. Yeah, I know this is being recorded, but people know this about me already. I grew up a neoconservative because I didn't have enough intellectual originality to think up libertarianism or to look for you guys. So I grew up thinking, well, I don't like, um, let's say, I don't like Mike Dukakis. Some, some people remember Mike Dukakis. I'm not the only one, right? Don't applaud Mike Dukakis. I just wanted to know. <laughs> or, you know, I didn't like Bill Clinton. So I thought, well, okay. I guess uh, I support whatever the Republican Party supports. And so I would look at their positions, and then after the fact, I would, I would discover rationalizations for these positions. So we've all been there, probably, at least a lot of us, in one party or another. And then I discovered libertarians. And it just blew my mind. It's like my head exploded. Like, Wait a minute, hold on. You mean to tell me that all of our political options are not exhausted by Clinton versus Bush? Are you telling me that? <laughs> and I'll tell you something, I am sure you're like me. That people, when, when they hear that you are opposed to President Obama, they say, oh yeah. I'm sure Sean Hannity would be a lot better. Oh. <laughs> what kind of a stunted world is it in which those are the two choices? Really, come on. Now in this particular election cycle, the Libertarian Party is going to get more attention because the media hates Donald Trump's guts. Anything it can do to stick it to him, they'll do. So it's not so much that NBC reporters, let's say, are suddenly reading Murray Rothbard and Louis Van Mises. <laughs> Nothing would please me more if that, were, uh, than if that were the case. But the question now is, with people looking to the Libertarian Party more than ever, and more inclined to give us a hearing, the question is that we have to ask ourselves, what do we want people to discover when they get it. In my view, one of the most important principles of marketing is product differentiation. So bear in mind product differentiation, and secondly, lessons from 2012, 2008, and 2016. These were election cycles in which there were big surprises. Obviously, Ron Paul was a big surprise. Nobody thought he would get millions of votes, and he did. Now, this one you'll probably want to hold your applause. Nobody thought Bernie Sanders would do quite so well in crickets. Right? Nobody thought, but, but, I mean, but you got to hand it to him. He, he had every disadvantage in the world you could possibly imagine. And in a way, he's turned the disadvantages to his advantage by portraying himself as the underdog against the machine politician, very clever. This year, we were all supposed to go out and vote for Jeb Bush. That was the guy, and I know this is a sensitive subject here in Orlando, right again. But that's the guy we were supposed to vote for. And he 
tanked. He crashed and burned. So who were the people who were successful? The people who were totally unconventional, right? Totally unconventional. Could you imagine Ron Paul being told by handlers what answer he's supposed to give to a question? Could you imagine that? If I want to meet the press, then doggone it, I'm going to tell them what I believe. And they ask him politically incorrect questions, he gives his answer. You think, oh, well, he's finished. And yet, he did better than him. And again, you're not looking at the Donald Trump supporter, but the fact is he doesn't say what the media thinks he ought to say. And every single time, he, like when he said the thing about John McCain, St. John McCain, he wasn't worshiping at the altar of St. John McCain. He said that, uh, well, you know, he, John McCain, was captured. I like people who aren't captured. And the New York Post said, Trump is finished. And I thought, okay. These people, they're so out of touch, they actually think the general public loves John McCain. <laughs> no, he was not finished by criticizing John McCain. That was a great thing to do, but there was no political handler who would have told him to do that. Mitt Romney was a guy we were all supposed to support, and Mitt Romney came out this year and said, hey, everybody, let's try and get some other nominee. And again, crickets, no one cared, no one's interested in that guy. So, we can either be a pale and boring replica of the two major parties, in, in which case we will never get any, never, impossible, if we try to play their game. Oh, we're playing your game, just 30% different. Right. We want to play your game, we just want to cut the budget a little bit. Why would anyone care about us? I mean, my gosh, think back to 1980, low-tax liberalism. That's how they try to portray libertarians. We're going to cut taxes 30% also. Okay, well, so was Reagan. So why would they vote libertarian? What possible reason would they have for voting libertarian? Low-tax liberalism. These are the wannabes. These are the think tank presidents who sit there in their sinecures and tell everybody in this room how they should vote to be respectable and everything else. What have these people accomplished? What in, after all the billions of dollars, with all their studies and their policy wonkery, what the heck have they accomplished? What has been reduced? What's been about nothing? And we're going to take strategy lessons from them? How about they accomplish one thing and then we'll think about it? No. On the other hand, we can be radically and excitingly different and unlike anything people have seen before. That, and not sleep-inducing policy wonkery, is what attracts attention and energy. Th that's why Bernie Sanders is doing well. Because he says things no one else has said. And that's why he got the young people, and Rand Paul didn't. He did not attract the young people. And we were all told his strategy is going to be great. He's going to get all those young people going to come out from the universities and vote for him in the Iowa caucuses. Okay. Those people are no longer employed, but I hope they're never employed again. Or they're employed for my worst enemy. That strategy did not work at all. For pussyfooting around important issues. If people can't get a straight answer out of the Libertarian Party, then we might as well just close up shop. We're not low-tax liberals. We're not wannabe Republicans. How about we just be libertarians for a change and let the chips fall where they may? No apologies. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, as I say, I am very happy to work with anybody. But let's not fool ourselves that, oh, if we kiss up to the left, we say, hey, we're socially liberal. We're kind of like you. Has it been your experience that left liberals say to you, you know, you libertarians agree with me on some things, so I can respect your position? No, they say, no, you're all shills of the Koch brothers or whatever. That's what they say. So don't fool yourselves. And, you know, I'm going to give you some harsh medicine here. Ann Coulter was right when she said libertarians are pansies because we can't say enough about how much we want to legalize pot. Oh, uh, gee, that'll get you in big trouble with the media. Oh, how edgy that is. Want to legalize pot? Well, nobody else agrees with you on that. <laughs> but how about freedom of association? Yeah. All the DC think tanks and the sheep magazines can't run away from that one fast enough. But either we believe in peace 
and not aggression, or we do not. And so if it takes us into areas that are unpopular, then that's where we need to go and explain it. <laughs>